Speakers, publishers, consultants, coaches, and info marketers unite. The Speaking of Wealth Show is your roadmap to success and significance. Learn the latest tools, technologies, and tactics to get more bookings, sell more products, and attract more clients. If you're looking to increase your direct response sales, create a big time personal brand, and become the go to guru, the Speaking of Wealth Show is for you. Here is your host, Jason Hartman. Welcome to the Speaking of Wealth Show. This is your host, Jason Hartman, where we discuss profit strategies for speakers, publishers, authors, consultants, coaches, info marketers, and just go over a whole bunch of exciting things that you can use to increase your business, to make your business more successful and more and more passive and more and more automated and more and more scalable. So we will be back with a great interview. Be sure to visit us at speakingofwealth.com. You can take advantage of our blog, subscribe to the RSS feed, and many other resources for free at speakingofwealth.com. And we will be back with a great interview for you in less than 60 seconds. Now's your opportunity to get the Financial Freedom Report. The Financial Freedom Report provides financial self-defense in uncertain times, and it's your source for innovative, forward-thinking investment property strategies and advice. Get your newsletter subscription today. You get a digital download and even more. Go to jasonhartman.com to get yours today. Hey, it's my pleasure to welcome Dino Dogan to the show. He is the creator of a concept called Triber. Well, not just a concept, an actual tool and a website. And I saw him speak at Blog World in New York City recently and was really, really impressed at his techniques in building a community, building communities and followers. And the topic today is basically how to build a community of fanatics. Dino, welcome. How are you? Jason, thank you so much for having me. I'm a great Hey, my pleasure. So building community, this is the holy grail of marketers today, whether it be a small local business that wants to have a a community and a strong customer base, or an internet marketer or blogger who obviously wants to build community and followers and influence as well. What is the secret to building communities? So, you know, uh, things changed. Things shifted. They shifted recently, and it caught almost everyone off guard. And those who kind of figured it out are thriving. So like Google and Zynga, Farmville, uh, Mafia Wars people, right? They figured it out. So back in the 80s, right, you had something like Marlboro Miles. And uh, Marlboro Miles was Marlboro's way of engaging their customers and building a community around the brand, right? But the way it worked, people would have to buy a pack of cigarettes in order to play Marlboro Miles game and redeem Marlboro Miles for stuff. Older people will remember this in their 30s and 40s, right? Young people may not, so it, it deserves an explanation, right? So that's, that's essentially been the sales funnel that has existed forever. People are customers first, then you engage and play a game with them and build a community with them and whatnot, right? But then between the 80s and now, Sometime in the late 90s, early 2000s, things just changed. And the sales funnel flipped. So uh, companies that figured out the flipped sales funnel are thriving. So take Google as an example, right? Google is not in the search business. They do search, right? But that's just how they get people in the door. Uh, Their actual business is selling ads. So they engage people first then some of those people become customers. Zynga is another perfect example. Uh, There's like a bazillion of people playing Farmville and Mafia Wars, but Zynga's conversion rate is actually about 7%, which is standard. So only about 7% of Zynga's customers, no, community members, let's call it community members, right, are actually converted into customers. So a lot of companies don't get that. A lot of companies don't realize that this sales funnel has flipped and people need to become members of your community. You need to engage with them first. You need to build trust with them first. And then some of those people will become your customers. 
Yeah, no question about it. You, it, it, it. So you you'd probably agree, as I think most successful marketers do, that it's more important to have a smaller group of really engaged community than it is to have just a lot of numbers, right? I, I couldn't agree more. Uh, actually, my, uh, my co-founder, uh, Dan Christo, and I had this conversation two days ago, and it prompted a post um, uh, that I wrote yesterday that I'm going to publish tomorrow on my blog, DIYblogger.net, right? And it's exactly what you just said. He asked me, Ben asked me, is it better to have 100 diehard fans or 100 diehard fans plus 900 just regular casual fans? Right? That's a long key wrench. That's not even numbers. That's like, you only have diehards. Should you throw those diehards in, in, in this big pool of numbers? And the answer is, you want 100 diehards. Because when you say something, when you do something, and 100 people say, yeah, right? They're like behind you 100%. That's one thing. When you say or do something, and like 100 people amongst thousands say yay, and the 900 say, meh. That, that's a whole other ball game. Uh, people in groups tend to move towards the mean. They tend to equalize somewhere in the middle. And if you want fanatics, you need to isolate your fanatics so that they can cheer each other on. They can go to each other to be even greater fanatics. And if there's, if there's a turd in punch bowl, right, if there's a fly in the ointment, especially if there's 900 flies in the ointment, that's going to dilute your message. It's going to dilute the effectiveness of what you're doing. So give me true fans. Give me 10 true fans over 1,000 casual fans any day. I couldn't agree more because those, those casual fans, they're just not engaged. The other thing that you didn't really mention is that the casual fans, they can consume a lot of your time and resources. And, you know, those resources could be better spent on the truly engaged people who will appreciate them and deserve them more, right? You are absolutely right. You're absolutely right. So when we started Tribe, we caught a lot of flag because, you know, we're doing something new. We're changing things. And people are accustomed to status quo. They don't like a change. So we caught a lot of flack. And then in the beginning, I engaged with those people. I tried to explain to them what it is that we're trying to do. But as time went on, exactly what you just said uh, happened. I kept wasting a lot of time on people who are never going to be your true fans anyways. So I made a conscious decision to basically ignore people who are negative Nellies or uh, doing – because it was – it was either spend time on, on that and a little bit of time on true fans or just ignore the casual fans or, or negative Nellies or whatever the case might be and just spend all of my time with true fans. And for me, it's exactly what you said. It's way better to just spend time with true fans. Right, right. So I'd like you to explain, Dino, what is Triber? You know, you call it a reach multiplier. What, what does it do? How does it work? Someone goes and do, they need to be a blogger to use it. Is that correct? So, yes and no. We're actually rolling out uh, uh, something called Atomic Tribes next week where you can bring your mom into your tribe if you wanted to uh, because she wouldn't be contributing content. She would be contributing her audience on Facebook and Twitter or whatever, right? But, uh, but that's, 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 you know, we're going to deploy that next week. Um, the core of Tribe is this. The blogosphere is broken. There are things that are wrong with the blogosphere. The blogosphere works for Googles and Twitters and Facebooks of the world. But it, it's not set up the right way for bloggers, especially new bloggers. So Triber, I'm a blogger. Dan's a blogger. Dan's mom and sisters are bloggers. Triber is us fixing the blogosphere for bloggers. So part of that is content distribution. If you're a new blogger and you want to get some eyeballs on your content, man, you try ranking high on Google. Right? It's almost impossible. Uh, it takes forever. It, it just, you have to be an SEO geek to do it. And most bloggers aren't. So with Triber, you set up a tribe of 20, 30 people, whatever, Bloggers, just like you, you focus on building tier one network relationships. You focus on, forget about the audience. The audience comes once you have a posse, once you have social proof, once you have people who already like to play with you, then other people see it and they want to come play, play too, right? So 
bloggers need to focus on building their tier one network of supporters, uh, pull them into a tribe, and every time you publish a blog post, everybody else in your tribe can automatically, semi-automatically or manually share it with their audience on Twitter, Facebook, G+, StumbleUpon, whatever the case might be. So, and, and of course, you do the same thing for, for your tribesmen. The other things that we do is content generation. We have something called uh, Reblog, uh, which is essentially like a syndication piece. Uh, which is one of those secret weapons that the blogs like Huffington Post and Mashable have. You go to uh, Read Right Web, for example, right? You always see this post has originally appeared on such and such blog, right? And it's been republished here. So that's essentially content syndication. In order for individual bloggers to do that, I mean, it's hard, right? You have to source the content. You have to get approval. You have to have editors who can go over the content and stuff like that. So we fixed all that. You can actually reblog a post by one of your tribe's mates. One click, it goes in as a draft to your blog. So you can actually get content. Authorship carries through all that stuff. It's essentially guest posting made easy. And the third piece that we do is zero loss of engagement. So recently we released a, a Triber comment system. We didn't want to, but we had to because all comment systems are doing it wrong. When you have a post on your blog and it gets syndicated to Huffington Post, you have two sets of comments, right? Right. Why? I agree. Why? Why? We, it doesn't make yeah, sense. We, yeah. we, we don't have the technology to make like a unified comment system. We do. It's Triber. So Triber comment system mirrors comments between two blogs or three or however many instances of the post you have. So in short, we're fixing the blogosphere for bloggers. That's really what Triber does. Okay. Now, does Triber work for podcasters as well, or does it need to be a text-based blog as opposed to audio or video? No, I, I, it can be audio or video. Uh, you know, in terms of some of the features that we have, like you can read a post inside your Tribal stream, so like on Triber. It works best with uh, text at the moment. But, uh, yeah, I mean, in terms of distributing content, it can be podcasts or videos or whatever the case might be. It doesn't matter. As long as it has an RSS feed, right, you're good to go. Fantastic. Now, is there a charge for Triber? No, no, no. Triber is free. Uh, we have virtual currency called Bones, and uh, Bones is used for certain higher functions. So, for example, we have something called Dynamic Tribes, and Dynamic Tribes are single purpose, single share tribes built based on your criteria, kind of like creating a Facebook ad, right? You set up your criteria, how many bones you want to spend, then part of those bones goes to people who share your content and whatnot. So like something like that, it will cost you bones. Because if it didn't, people would just go nuts with it, right? But in terms of like 90% uh, of everything you do on Triber, you don't need uh, any bones, you don't need any money. Do, do you buy bones with money though? Yeah, 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 absolutely. Well, not with money, with credit cards. Right, well. <laughs> <laughs> that, that is a good line, good answer. Okay, so when someone buys bones, so how much does a bone cost, for example? I have no idea. Um, so, I, so I love your like honesty. Three... <laughs> I have no idea. Yeah, yeah. So I, I have to actually check the uh, options. I just want to get an idea if someone, you know, so if someone listening wants to use some of the higher functions of it, what will it cost them? I'm sure it's nominal, yeah. though, right? Yeah, absolutely. So, like, we give you 100 bones uh, when you sign up just to play with, to kind of get a sense of what they are. And I'm looking at the um, options to buy. So 150 bones is 10 bucks. Okay, that doesn't give you uh, much sense of scale. So, like, for example, to create a new tribe, it's 30 bones, right? So we give you a tribe... Uh, when you join, but if you want to create additional tribes, it's 30 bones. So that gives you an idea of like how, how far 150 bones go. You can create several tribes. If you want to invite people who are already on Triber into your tribe, that's 15 bones. If you want to invite people who are outsiders, that's free. Again, you know, it's kind of a forced mindfulness. We, we learned all of this the hard way. If you don't impose certain nominal costs, for certain actions, people just go nuts and, you know, they just uh, go for numbers. And yeah, whatnot. it becomes abused. So how did you create Triber? Like, why did you, why did you create it? Uh, scratching my own itch, that's really what it comes down to. I'm a geek by nature. Uh, I spent over a decade uh, um, 
uh, not only doing network engineering, but actually teaching other computer geeks how to become bigger computer geeks. And when I got into the social media and marketing and the blogosphere and the whole whole thing, you know, there's so much snake oil out there. There's so much BS going on. You know, I was clever enough to cut through all of it and see what works and what doesn't and why it works. So, you know, Gary V. Vaynerchuk, Gary Vaynerchuk is one of my favorite dudes in social media, right? And one of the things he says, he's like, if I was a nobody right now, you know, and I was starting from scratch right now, I would be just as successful. And I call shenanigans on that. Because there's so many dudes who are just amazing, and there was a wave to catch. And if you missed that wave, and it happened a few years ago, started in 2005-ish. If you were doing something in 2005, and you caught that wave upwards, you're something now. But now the wave evened out. It plateaued. So we're equalizing the blogosphere for new bloggers. That's really my goal. Okay, good, good. Well, so people can visit Triber, and you, that has a somewhat unique spelling, of course. So do you want to spell Triber for everybody? Yeah, it's tribe, like a regular tribe, and then two R's at the end. Just like Fiverr, Triber. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. And what else should they know about it, or what else should they know about creating great communities? Yeah, man, there's so much. So, I mean, in terms of um, uh, what they should know about Triber is Triber is created by bloggers for bloggers. I'm a blogger. I am ridiculously accessible. I'm on Twitter all day. Um, You know, email, Skype. I mean, uh, when my Skype is working, of course. So I'm ridiculously accessible. So, yeah, please hit me up, ask questions. I'm there to engage and help people out. But in terms of building communities, it, selflessness goes a long way. It, 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 what it comes down to, like, if you try to build a community because you want to build a community, it's probably not going to work, right? Because people want to build a community so they can say, I've built a community, or look at the size of my community. It's a pissing contest, right? But if you're building a community to truly fix somebody's problem, to truly sort of move the free line, Uh, just to blow it out of the water, to, you know, really help people out, to really kind of mindfully engage with people and try to create a culture. Look at Reddit, for example, right? I I think Reddit uh, won this thumbing up-down war between Reddit and Dig because of the unique Reddit culture, right? Uh, They really try to instill a certain sense of culture into their community, whereas I guess Dig really didn't do such a great job of that. So it's it's such a unique problem to solve, building a community, but it really starts with just solve a problem for people, and they're going to love you for it. I mean, that's, you know, it's what marketing and product making is really about. Yep, no question. I agree. And then engage, engage, engage. There are people that solve problems, but they don't engage. They're not accessible. They don't re-engage. But that that really begs the question, doesn't it, that, you know, with all of this accessibility and engagement, that is the right thing to do. However, if you want to build a large community, I mean, how do you scale this? You you can't do this all yourself. Big companies have, have social media people that are unstaffed, that are, you know, responding to every comment. And But, but I, I got to tell you, though, I'm going to take issue with Starbucks. I only one time in my whole life posted to their Facebook page and they did not respond. <laughs> mm-hmm. but, uh, but, you know, big companies like that have people on staff to do all of that stuff. And, well, well, this is a great part of business. It is, for most people, just a part of business. It is not the core business. So they've got to manage other parts of their business a lot of times. Yeah. So, well, one, uh, like you took issue with Starbucks, uh, I'm going to take issue with large corporations and sort of point to what they do wrong some of the time. Uh, And that is they put interns and people who have no personal vested interest in a community to run the community. And you can answer the question, but you can also to answer the question. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean? listen, I'm going to totally agree with you there because I think that generally agencies, social media agencies, right. and PR firms and staff people, they're just not, their stuff is just very sterile and blase. Yep. You know, it's, exactly. it just doesn't really do it. It's not engaged. It's not vested. Yeah. yeah it, it lacks personality. Now, in terms of scaling a community and scaling your own personal bandwidth, that's something that I've been thinking about a lot 
lately. So it's like, how do we, um, and, you know, we've noticed this like six months into Triber, uh, which we, by the way, we started Triber back in March last year, 2011. So it's like, how do you scale the culture? So I figured out two really good ways to scale the culture. One is right off the bat, as we started in doing this stuff, people felt so grateful that we were lucky enough to have few really diehard fans who immediately jumped on board and started answering questions for people, you know, moderating comments, just kind of being all over the place. Uh, Nicole Cook, DailyDishRecipes.com. Uh, she's one of the moderators on Triber, and she's been there like from almost day one. She has answered more tech support questions than I did, than I have. So people like that, you want to highlight them. You want to blast them all over the place. In fact, in my talk uh, at Blog World, I mentioned Nicole Cook and Christine Majewski and Justice Mitchell and John Garrett. These are all people who have just helped us out tremendously. And whenever I can highlight them, put them on display, and show the rest of the community these people who are doing these incredible things and, you know, uh, showing how grateful I personally am to them, uh, I think that's a good thing, and it sets a good example. So that's one thing. The other thing is, so, you know, I've been doing social media consulting for a few years now, and I kept saying this to people, to businesses, to whoever, uh, whoever's going to listen, to bloggers, to write about their value system. You can write about how-tos, and you can write useful articles or whatever, but you can also write about your value system. So I'll give you an example. On Triber Blog, you know, I kept focusing on how-tos. Um, I've been doing that for a long time. You know, how to do this, how to do that, how to build a tribe, whatever. And that's fine. But it doesn't talk about the values that I have and the values I want to instill into the tribal community. So recently, I changed my mindset. Uh, it took a while. Uh, and I started talking about the values that I want to impart onto the community. So, for example, the latest post on Triber blog is, do you know your blogging history? So, you know, it starts in like 1994, and it uh, uh, points to all the milestones along the way, till today and then, you know, where are we going with this stuff and whatnot. I mean, that's kind of sharing the value. I'm going to publish a post about uh, collaboration. Collaboration is a value system that I would like to impart on, you know, onto the community. So, so I need to write more posts about collaboration, for example. And what happens when small, when a large group of small players band together? And that's really what Triber is about. So you can have a large group of small players and then collectively you can be a force to be reckoned with. So that's a value system that I would like to impart. And I feel like we haven't used Triber blog to its maximum potential in that regard. And that's something I'm going to ch change. Right, right. Okay. Yeah, good. Good stuff. Just a little bit, uh, one more thing back on Triber before we wrap up here. So so just conceptually, what it is, is it's it's getting a, establishing a core of people you know to recommend your blogs, podcast, content to other people, right? Absolutely. Yeah, that's, to their audience. That's the core of what it is. So those and when people... And when you say recommend, it's really share, because it's share. an implied recommendation, fair enough. Yeah, right? fair enough. Yeah, fair enough. But those people have to have their own audience. They have to be bloggers, or can they just be friends on Facebook that aren't in the blogging business, if you will? Right, right. So, so traditional tribes, uh, all the tribes that are on there right now, it's all tribes of bloggers. But the Atomic tribe uh, that we're rolling out next week you don't have to have bloggers in your tribe. You can bring your mom into your tribe or your friends on Facebook or whatever. We call it Atomic Tribes because when people join your Atomic Tribe, your content explodes all over the blogosphere. <laughs> That's the little marketing line we're using. <laughs> so when we roll out Atomic Tribes, and that's going to be a monthly subscription, $40. When we roll out Atomic Tribes, you will be able to bring anyone who has a Twitter or Facebook or LinkedIn account and they can share your content automatically, semi-automatically, or manually. Good. Well, hey, tell people where they can learn more. Obviously, the Triber website, but give out your blog, if you will, too. Yeah, it's uh, DIYblogger.net. 
I can do it yourself, blogger.net. It's not com. I couldn't get it. It was already taken. But, yeah, I'm, you know, you can find me there. And, you know, the rest of my contact information is on my blog. I'm really extremely accessible. So Fantastic. Well, Dino, thank you for being so accessible and for sharing so openly, really, with the blogosphere and the community of people out there who want to better market themselves, have more influence, and get the word out of about their business or their causes or whatever they're interested in. Great, great service you're doing, Dino. Thanks again. Thank you, Jason. What's great about the shows you'll find on jasonhartman.com is that if you want to learn about investing in and managing income properties for college students, there's a show for that. If you want to learn how to get noticed online and in social media, there's a show for that. If you want to know how to save on life's largest expense, there's a show for that. And if you'd like to know about America's crime of the century, there's even a show for that. Yep. There's a show for just about anything, only from jasonhartman.com, or type in Jason Hartman in the iTunes store. This show is produced by the Hartman Media Company, all rights reserved. For distribution or publication rights and media interviews, please visit www.hartmanmedia.com or email media at hartmanmedia.com. Nothing on this show should be considered specific personal or professional advice. Please consult an appropriate tax, legal, real estate, or business professional for individualized advice. Opinions of guests are their own, and the host is acting on behalf of Platinum Properties Investor Network, Inc., exclusively.